Hello everybody. Today in this lesson we are not going to talk about physically making a graph. We are going to talk about the different types of graphing that you should be familiar with. And most importantly, how to read and interpret graphs. Now reading and interpreting graphs is something we're going to be doing throughout the year, especially as we study each of these other types of functions in depth. We're going to learn about different types of interpretations. So let's first start off with things that you did in elementary school that you don't see so often in algebra, and that is the statistical graph. I mean like the bar graphs, the pie charts, the histograms, and this weird thing called a box and whisker plot. Now these are graphs of one variable, you know, like when you're trying to pull what everyone's favorite cafeteria food item is and those little bars or pie charts that break up the class or whatever. The only time you're going to see this graph in algebra is uh, if the state of Texas makes you take your grade level star exam, and then you'll have to deal with those. But uh, the only one here that is actually you might not have heard of is a box and whisker plot, and uh, you might see a little video pop up later describing to you what these are, but it's not crucial, so maybe not. Now the type of statistical graph you will see in algebra is called a scatter plot. And these are statistical graphs of two variable data. So they are used to graph the data you get from, say, an experiment or a data that you collect over time. And there are a couple of activities, especially in the second semester, when you're going to take some collected data, either from an experiment or collected over time, and you're going to make scatter plots. Now, the whole point of a scatter plot is to determine the relationship. And so sometimes you just do them to see if there is a relationship. And then if there is a relationship between the variables, can you figure out maybe an equation for them? Now the most basic level of interpretation of a scatter plot is first, you determine if there is a relationship. And then later on when we study equations in depth, you're gonna learn how to write an equation for a relationship if it exists and then use it to make predictions. But first let's go with the basics. Let's determine if these little graphs of scatter plots, they're sketches now, they're not actually high quality graphs of scatter plots, have a relationship between the variables. And there's really fundamentally three things that can happen when you have a scatter plot. Now I'm not talking about the shape of the trend, it's just kind of the trend. So this data you will notice is trending upwards so it's kind of increasing. So of course you can say that this data is increasing, but that's not actually the word we use for scatter plots. We say that there is a positive correlation. And the way that would be phrased is there's a positive correlation between the independent and dependent variables, or they're positively correlated. That's the kind of language you're gonna hear. And what that means is as the independent variable is increasing, the dependent variable is increasing as well. So like the more you study, the better your grades are. Now, this data has a downward trend. And we can of course say it's decreasing, but for scatter plots, we say it has a negative correlation. That means as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable decreases, it goes down. So an example of data that's negatively correlated could be something like the longer you are on the calculator, the less battery life there is in the calculator. Now over here, we seem to have randomness. So when the data points are all random and just sort of looks like they've just been sprinkled on there, then we say there is no correlation. So this could be like the graph of how tall you are versus your algebra grade. Like there's no relationship between your height and your algebra grade. So there would be no correlation there. Now the type of graph that we use most often in algebra is the graph of the equation. And here you know there's a relationship. It's the equation. And the whole point of the graph is for you to see a picture of that relationship and that enables you to find patterns and special features. And when I say special features, I mean things like maximum values or minimum values, and whether it's increasing or decreasing, and when is it increasing and when is it decreasing. And so that's why we graph equations, is to study those relationships. There are infinitely many types of graphs, but every single graph that you're gonna look at can be broken down into some fundamental shapes. 
And here are four of the eight fundamental shapes. Now I've drawn them as with arrows on the ends, but sometimes your graph might have one of these connected with one of those. And so you don't necessarily have arrows going on forever, but you can take any graph and break it up into these fundamental pieces. And I'm going to explain to you how to interpret each of the pieces. So when you get a graph, all you have to do is break it down into the shapes and then talk about what's happening in each of those little shapes. So this shape here is very uninteresting. It is a horizontal line and there is no change here at all because nothing's changing. It's just and we call this constant. So nothing exciting is happening here. Okay, as x increases, y stays the same. So x increases, y stays the same. Right, it's just always burp. Now here, we say this is increasing. And the reason why we say this is increasing is because as x increases, the y increases as well. We don't say positively correlated, we say increasing when it's a graph of an equation. Only use correlation with scatter plots. Now there's something special at how this is increasing. This is increasing at a constant speed or constant rate. So it's not like you're increasing faster or slower, you're just increasing at a steady rate. So we're gonna say steady slash constant rate. Now if we look over here, this graph, and by the way, graphs are always left uh, read from left to right. This graph would then be decreasing because as x increases, y is decreasing. And also, the rate thing is the same. It is a constant rate here. That's what straight lines give you is they give you constant rate. Now this one here is special um, because what you have here is that x is staying the same and y is, well, it could be increasing or decreasing depending on your perspective. This is kind of what we're gonna call impossible, especially with the way, what we study in Algebra 1, we study these things called functions, and it's like saying that at one instant in time, I am at all of these different places. So uh, we're gonna say this is not possible. Now those were the straight line segments. Now let's look at some curvy stuff. Now this is where you're gonna have to stop and think for a second, and I'm going to use a ruler to help me here. Okay, so first off, reading from left to right, this graph is also increasing because as x gets bigger, the y value gets bigger too. But what's different is it's not increasing at a steady or constant rate. Something's happening to the speed at which it increases. So if I look here, if I just think about a point on this curve and I have my ruler along the curve, and if I keep this point on my ruler on the curve, and I travel along the curve on my ruler, I see what happens to the steepness of the ruler. The ruler in this case is getting less and less steep, so what that means is I am slowing down. So here it's steeper, and here it's less steep, so what's going on is whatever is changing is slowing down. So it's increasing, but it's slowing down as it goes. So it's like you're driving to school and you're approaching school, your distance from home is increasing, but you hit traffic around Keeling and you start to slow down. I can do the same thing here. If I look at this graph, the x increases. As the x increases from left to right, the y increases, so this graph is also increasing. But if I look at this change in steepness here, I start off not so steep, but then as I travel along the curve, I get steeper and steeper and steeper. So at this point, not so steep. This point, really steep. So what's happening is I'm speeding up. So if this is your traveling out of Austin, you know, when you're downtown, you're driving pretty slow, but when you get past, you know, like Pflugerville and Round Rock and you're, you know, driving on I-35, you can start speeding up because the traffic starts to go away. So those are the two increasing curves. Let's look at the two decreasing curves. So this curve is showing data that is decreasing. 
because as x is getting bigger, the y value is getting smaller. And if I want to see how this one's changing, take a point, have the ruler, trace along the curve. What's going on is the ruler's getting steeper and steeper. So that meant here, not so steep, here, super steep. That means I am speeding up. So whatever's happening, I'm speeding up. So that's like if I drop a cantaloupe off the building, at first the cantaloupe stops, starts at a dead stop, but then gravity pulls it down so it starts speeding up until splat on the ground. Now this is the last of the curves. This one's decreasing. Of course, x is increasing, y is decreasing, and you can predict what's happening here. But if I, once again, follow the shape of the curve with the ruler, the ruler's getting less steep. So here, things are super steep. Here, things are not so steep. And so then I am slowing down. So if you think about the kind of graphs, if you've ever played with the calculator or just played with graphs in general, you know, you can have a graph that looks like this, right? And what this graph is made up of is two halves, right? It's made up of this piece on one side and then that piece on the other side, right? Or if you look at the really fancy graphs, you know, like a sinusoidal curve or something, it's made up of a bunch of these pieces. And so you just have to interpret what's going on in each piece, right? So every single graph you're going to find in algebra, geometry, algebra 2, pre-cal, are going to be made up of those eight fundamental shapes.